But the minute they get in their head, the minute somebody says something that throws them off, the minute they start judging themselves, the minute they start asking themselves, how long is this gonna last? That's when they get in their head and the streak ends. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I'm into the program a little, little less than a month. I'm currently facing a big challenge, which is breaking out of a feminacy. Essentially, the first week went well, um, but as I advance and continue and try to push, it gets harder and harder. Uh, certain days, my head just isn't there. It seems like my mental, uh, my mental just audio auto destructs until I tell myself I need to take a break, go smoke, or distract myself into doing some bullshit. I just have a hard time battling these demons. It affects my mood, my body, my soul, everything. I'm tired and I have been tired of these mood swings for so long. It feels like it takes control of my life. I tell myself as long as I do it, it is better than doing nothing. But these demons just weigh so much. I understand that there's no easy fix, but maybe I need a bit of feedback or maybe some tips or something. So. If somebody comes to your door, right? Remember, I'm not making fun of like Jehovah Witnesses, but you know, they come to the door and you're not, you're not interested in talking to them. They come and they ring that doorbell. What do you do? You look out the window and you say, oh, I ain't answering that door, right? You don't entertain unwelcome guests, right? And so the same thing is with our thoughts. You're, what's happening is you're getting into moods because you're allowing thoughts to take you there. When you entertain a thought, it comes into your body and it changes the mood. Just like if you entertain a guest, say that guest, that unwelcome guest, you entertain him, you bring him into your house, you're gonna change the energy in the house, you're gonna change the mood of the house. We gotta stop the, you use the word demons, but it's not always demons. It is, sometimes it is demons, but a lot of times it's our own fallen nature. And sometimes we have to stop that. We got to stop the process. The battlefield for your soul is in the mind. And so we have to stop. We have to, we have to stop the process at the thought. And, that, and the first thought that usually leads you to a mood that causes you to, you know, start throwing things away and self-destructing, right? You say mood swings. The first thought is a thought of judgment, judging yourself, all right? Oh man, I wish I had more energy. I wish I was more motivated. I wish I could just do this and get it over with. I wish, right? And you're being and you're and you're thinking about everything except what you actually are. You're not taking yourself for face value and accepting yourself as you are. You're judging yourself, right? And I know this, and I know you can overcome this because you say this. You say, uh, Also, when I'm able to get more into a being state, it feels like the demons don't weigh as much. I'm sure there's a correlation between the two. And if I can get myself to always be in that state of mind, I'll be able to push further and better through anything. Correct me if I'm wrong. However, I find myself able to be in a state only for so long. And then I seem to lose mentality and start having and, and to start building it up all over again, which really doesn't help help some days so what you're talking about there when you say you find yourself in a being state and that's when things start to flow it's because you're not judging yourself you're not having conversations with yourself you're just doing it uh the minute that the thoughts come in is when you start judging yourself and then you throw yourself off you know have you ever seen an athlete right you know it's like a basketball player like kobe bryant or something right and this athlete is in the zone, right? Or like when I used to go to Mets games when I was a kid, right? A pitcher who's pitching like a, a no hitter. This, athlete, this athlete's in the zone, boom. He's hitting the shots, every shot after shot after shot, or pitch after pitch after pitch. And it seems almost as if he's not there. It's like a muse has taken over and is guiding this man's body and the ball as it leaves its hand. It's the most amazing thing to say, to see. And when you ask somebody that's in that state, what were they thinking while they're doing it? Their answer nine times out of 10 would be, I don't know. I just wasn't thinking. But the minute they get in their head, the minute somebody says something that throws them off, the minute they start judging themselves, the minute they start asking themselves, how long is this going to last? That's when they get in their head and the streak ends. It's all distractions. When you're allowing yourself to be, it's because there's no thought, there's no feeling, 
there's no anxiety or impetus to do something. You're just allowing yourself to be. Catch yourself, bro. Catch yourself when you're knocking yourself out of that state of being and, and write down the conversation you were having with yourself. Because it's a conversation. When I used to go to Mets games when I was a kid, and I remember going this one time, and this guy, one of the pitchers, who was it? Like, I don't know who the pitcher was, Dwight Gooden or something. He was pitching a no-hitter that day. It was the most amazing thing ever. I must have been like 10 years old, and my friend took me, and it was crazy. But we had this, uh, we were in the box seats, and when you're in the box seats, sometimes you're in box seats with people that are not fans. I don't know how it works out that way, but we were always in these box seats, and, it, and there was this, uh, somebody in the box seats next to us that was like carton, voting for the other team. And this guy was shouting all kinds of crazy things to the pitcher. He was saying, your oh, I remember he said something so funny. I was a kid. I was laughing. He said something. Like, oh, he said, your mother douches with Drano. <laughs> this is the kind of crazy shit this guy was shouting out just to get in the pitcher's head. He said, your mom douches with Drano. I didn't even know what that meant when I was a kid, but I laughed my ass off because it sounded funny. He's, he was just saying all kinds of stuff. I can't remember most of them, but he was just... What he was trying to do was to be that little voice, that little demonic voice, that little fallen nature voice that you're hearing in your head. He was trying to do it to get this guy out of being in the zone. The only difference is rather than having somebody shout from the box seats, you shouting in your own head. So that's why I tell you when it starts to happen, write down what that heckler was saying to you. That heckler is heckling the shit out of you, right? And and we give that heckler power when we think what he's saying is true. If you're sitting down studying, right? Listen, bro. First of all, you should never be sitting down in the same spot studying longer than 30 minutes. That's just, that's just common courtesy for your, for, for your uh, concentration. Common courtesy for your concentration is to break it up. But if you decide after 30 minutes, you're like, man, I got to get up and go have a smoke. I got to go take a walk. I got to go get out of here. But you say to yourself, no, I, I got to sit. I got to push through. I got to make this happen. Why am I being lazy? Bro, you just got in your fucking head. 30 minutes comes around. You start stretching and getting itchy. You, go, you know what you do? You go for a goddamn walk. You go take a walk. You go do what you got to do. And then you know what you do? You put yourself on a timer. And you say, good, I'm going to take a 30-minute walk. I'm going to take a 30-minute break. And then you come back and you pick up right where you were. And it's easy to pick up right where you are if you're not out there judging yourself, beating yourself up, and then doing things to numb you, right? So that the pain goes away. I'm going to play some video games. That feels better. I'm going to go scroll them thoughts on Instagram. That feels better. I'm going to go watch some TikTok girls dancing. That's going to make me feel better. I'm going to smoke some cigarettes, smoke some weed, take a shot of whiskey. That's going to make me feel better. All that shit, bro, is just going to slow you down. You go take your walk, and just like a man on a mission, you come back, you sit down, and you do it again. And you and listen, it's very easy to overwork. It's very mental work is tougher than workout sometimes. It's very easy to over overwork. So you give yourself those breaks, and you don't overdo it. You, you say, look, a little bit every day. A, this is a key, man. A little bit every day. A little bit every day. A little bit every day. My father tells a story about. Uh, um, point finger and do little. There's a story about point finger and do little. <laughs> My dad telling dumb stories. Point finger, he comes out and he's like, I'm going to do all this and I'm going to do all that and look at all these things I'm going to do. And he's busy pointing his finger. All this. I'm going to get it all done. That's point finger. Do little, he don't point his finger. Do little comes out. And you know what he does every day? I do a little bit. And then he goes home. I'll do a little bit and then go home. A year later, point finger still pointing his finger, talking about shit. Do little, got the job done with his mouth shut. So that's really all it takes, bro. That's really all it takes, bro. You just gotta do a little every day and you'll be all right. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram 
and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.